Okay. Uh, good. Good morning, everybody. Um, so, uh, well, f first of all, I have to make the usual apology that when I sent in my um, abstract a few months ago for this, uh, what I have to say is a bit different to what I had said I would say. Okay. The big difference is that I'm going to focus on D.T. Suzuki rather than uh, Nishida. Okay. Um, I, I'm working now on, on D.T. Suzuki and I'm focusing on him and I have more to say about him. Uh, I do think, I would always make the argument that Suzuki, there's nothing Suzuki says that Nishida wouldn't say. Okay? I think they're very compatible philosophers. Okay? Um, I'm looking at the uh, Kyoto School and I feel one of the major philosophical projects of the Kyoto School was to try and see what religion can be like after science, after the age of science. And I think they, all of them really make the, are the main figures, all of them make the argument that even after science there still is a, a religious knowledge that science cannot get to. There's kind of, um, uh, and um, this is perhaps, this is a knowledge that is a, a, a knowledge of non-duality that perhaps is exemplified, expressed, peaks at the concept of nothingness and emptiness. Having said that, there are divisions within the Kyoto school, okay, between Suzuki, Nishida, Tanabe, um, and uh, it's informative to look at these divisions as they will tell us what the, um, the, the concepts and systems that individual philosophers within the Kyoto school were trying to construct and create. Um, so my aim is to look at D.T. Suzuki's philosophical system to see what this entailed, to see what his concepts really imp implied, um, and then to uh, see if this system needs certain kinds of modifications or corrections. Uh, and t look at whether Tanabe, who was in dialogue, conversation with Suzuki and Nishida, can help Suzuki construct or modify a uh, a system that can deal with, with uh, certain challenges that, that Suzuki's philosophical system encounters. Okay, um, okay so in other words, the idea is I want to explain, let's say philosophy is like a conversation, Suzuki has said something and I want uh, Tanabe to talk back to him to, to kind of push the conversation forward, okay, within this Kyoto school system, this Kyoto school conversation, okay, philosophical conversation. Okay, um, so Suzuki, the, the philosophy of D.T. Suzuki, of course D.T. Suzuki, well, Suzuki was the great anti-philosopher philosopher, okay, his philosophy was anti-philosophy. Um, this um, made him a big huge hero in the West among Western intellectual circles. Suzuki was the, was the philosopher who would march into the field of philosophy and in an anarchistic way declare it all limited, restrained, useless and this kind of iconoclasm, this kind of active, localised active power against the, the discourses of philosophy won him a lot of uh, uh, fans in the West. Okay? In the Kyoto school they, they were not so receptive to Suzuki's anti-philosophy instincts um, Nishitani, when he's talking about Suzuki, he just simply says Suzuki was always anti-philosophy. He had his own reasons for this, suggesting that Nishitani didn't really agree with those sentiments. Tanabe was more explicit. Tanabe and Suzuki kind of had a, a spared, uh, had a bit of a, a argument, let's say, about the role of philosophy. Okay, and Tanabe was actively against. Suzuki's anti-philosophy stance. Suzuki was against Tanabe's philosophy stance, okay? Um, but he does have a philosophy. Even if you're anti-philosophy, yeah, that is your philosophy, okay? So let's talk about Suzuki's anti philosophical system, okay? It's not, Suzuki's philosophical system is not described in any particular work. It has to be something that's extracted, pulled out from 
a number of his works that he wrote over a few decades, okay? starting quite from quite early on. There was a consistency about him, which Nishitani points out. He was very consistent from when he started writing right up until the, the 1960s, when he passed away. Um, Suzuki starts off with the assumption that um, religion has a, a knowledge that um, science and rationality and rationality here I, I would call philosophy, that science and philosophy don't have. And this is a, uh, it's, it's not just a different knowledge, it's, it's a better knowledge, it's a more complete knowledge, a more pure knowledge, okay? The problem with science and philosophy are they are ultimately dualistic. They, they work from having a knower and a known, a seer and a seer, a seer and a seen, a subject or an object, a self and an other, okay? That's how philosophical and scientific knowledge works. It has to create this duality. Um, but such knowledge, such sight, such division leaves out the knower, the seer, the subject, the self. Um, so this makes it, number one, partial and incomplete knowledge. Okay? Number two, it is linear knowledge. It's knowledge that depends on a process. Okay, for example, it's language dependent. It, it depends on the mediation of, of, of symbols, utterances that are removed. They're not direct experiences. They're removed from what they're trying to describe, what they're trying to know. It involves the mediation of time, okay? um, which means that when what is to be known is known, it's already either out there, away from you, or it's already gone. Okay? Um, religion can, by contrast, provide a purer more complete knowledge, okay? Um, this is because, first of all, religion in, can include the knower, okay? The known and the knower. Um, religion is knowledge of the here and the now. It, it presents itself as an eternal, infinite circle and not a finite line. It's knowledge of the thusness of the knower. That, that's the word Suzuki uses a lot, thus, T-H-U-S, as, as in that, this, that, that, thus, okay? The thusness of the knower um, and what is known. Um, the, for this to work, the knowing subject and the known object drop away. And what you have instead is just pure knowledge. Pure knowledge happens. The seer and the seen becomes just seeing this, okay? And um, this is most dramatically exemplified through Zen Satori, but Suzuki always held out that other religions can have this knowledge, including, uh, uh, for example, Jodo, Pure, pure Land uh, Buddhism. Um, this kind of religious knowledge works because there is an ultimate unity to our, our existence now. No matter what way we interpret our experienced world, we are still in the world. This thusness to our existence in the world never goes away, even if we don't always seem aware of it. Even if uh, the apparent disunity of the world distracts us, our knowledge of its ultimate unity, uh, which we experience every moment, is still there, still known. Okay? Uh, religious knowledge is about knowing what you already know. It's not about finding out about the world out there, as w what science and rationality philosophy do. But knowing the world out there is already known, otherwise there would be no world out there for you to know. Okay? Um, uh, it's about reducing out there to in here. Okay? To, it's about trying to get to the ultimate primordial before all divisions. <laughs> occur kind of knowledge, okay? Like Zen, for example, always talks about the person with no rank, okay? That you, before you, <laughs> are in the world, okay? But you're st st there's a point where you're there even though you're not in the world yet. Um, also, um, the, the idea of the, the face you had before you were born, okay? There, there is some kind of something there before you, you come into it, okay? Okay, and this knowledge stem, uh, yeah. Um, this um, knowledge of, of what is already known is not a, a linear process. It is situated in the thusness of the now you experience. Um, it is knowledge uh, from or of the experience of the world you have that even God does not experience. So, as you sit there, people, 
You have an experience and knowledge of the world that even God Almighty himself cannot have. Okay? Okay, it's that knowledge. Okay? However, this knowledge is not what we can be aware of constantly in our everyday minds. Okay? <laughs> Life would be hard, okay, if that happened. The everyday mind needs the fiction between uh, uh, world and self and the linearity of time. Uh, we assume we are isolates in a world of singularities, isolates, whatever, in a world of coherently divided objects uh, going from moment to moment. Okay? Perhaps God or science in its most idealistic, theoretical assumption of itself, our, our rationality uh, in its purest, can completely see the full picture, the, have the purest knowledge of, of this kind of line of time we are in. But we who are in it um, cannot, okay? Um, um, but even so, even if you are God or, or uh, the omniscient scientist, um, this linear knowledge being discovered by science and rationality excludes religious knowledge of the deeper non-linear unity. This unity is known not by a knower seeing a linear unfolding of the world, but by the knower knowing the functioning and fruition of this ultimate deeper unity. This ultimate unity is an emptiness, a nothingness, and for science and rationality to reach this knowledge would be an absurdity, a collapse for, for both of them. So to summarize, Suzuki's philosophy is this. There's a problem of the disunity between the self and the other. And it's, it, this, is, this self and the other division is the realm which, within science and rationality work. But religion works at the re re level of the transcendent self, a self that transcends this self versus other. Duality, to go to a non-duality, a non no self or other, no division between the many and the one, the one, the many. The one, the many, the many, and the one don't go away, but there's a non-duality there, okay? Including, inclusive of both. Um, I would argue that perhaps Nishida's um, key concept of the Zetai Mujun Teki, the, 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 the um, uh, contradictory, uh, sorry, absolute contradictory self-identity um, is a description of what Suzuki is trying to also describe, okay? Okay, there are problems though with Suzuki's philosophical system, I would argue. Number one, ultimate knowledge excludes history. It excludes the narrative of human life, okay? Infinite circles go nowhere, okay? Imagine you drive a car with a wheel the size of infinity, Okay? You would not go anywhere. Okay? Um, um, so, you know, uh, infinite knowledge has to exclude history. Okay? Uh, so Suzuki's ph uh, philosophy works in, it informs, it's meaningful only within the end of history. Okay? Uh, in all fairness, Suzuki does tell us what the end of history is. It's Judging by what he says in his books, um, Zen in Japanese culture and Nihon Takile, say, Japanese spirituality, the end of history is Kamakura period Japan. Okay? Okay. That's where it works. Okay? Um, also, similar to this, there is a problem in his system of the universal versus the particular. Okay? Suzuki will describe. Zen. Let's, t let's use it as Zen, okay? Uh, his, his system doesn't just include Zen. It's also Jodo knowledge, etc., etc., religious knowledge, religious spirituality. But his descriptions of Zen, he will say, Zen is everything. Zen is the mountain. He says that in his introduction to Zen Buddhism. Zen is the mountain. Zen is the river. Zen is the flower, okay? But Zen is um, samurai, samurai swords, swords and not airplanes, okay? Zen is drinking tea and not going to the pub and getting drunk. Okay, so it seems that on the one hand, he, he, he um, is devising this ultimate non-dual vision, okay, where, where he's rejecting the idea of A versus B. This is a pen, this is a glass, A, B, no, that's a duality. So this, he's rejecting this kind of digital duality, okay, between A and B. But in a way, he's reinvented a kind of an analog duality, where it's all Zen, but 
it's like a rather non-off switch, Zen, non-Zen. There's kind of a dial where this society is more Zen-ish than that society. This activity is more Zen-ish than that. This art is more Zen-ish than that type of art, okay? He's unable to overcome the universal versus the particular problem, okay? Um, and then his last, his biggest problem is the morality problem, okay? Now, Suzuki, D.T. Suzuki, by all descriptions, was a very nice person, good human being, okay? I'm not attacking his personal morality, he was a nice person. But his Zen, at his descriptions, his writings did at times present moral problems, okay? Most famously in his descriptions of, of samurai and swords. And I'm going to quote one line that the philosopher Slavoj Zizek has, has picked out to basically attack Suzuki. Um, he's talking about the samurai, Suzuki says, and, and the samurai with the sword killing his enemy he says, it is not really he, the samurai, but the sword that does the killing. He had no desire to do harm to anybody, but the enemy appears and makes himself a victim. Okay? Now, uh, I don't want to attack somebody over just one line, one tweet, one paragraph, okay? But I do think we can, should highlight this, because number one, Zizek has highlighted it, and it needs to be defended. Number two, even if he didn't say it, it's still a valid question, okay? The, the, the morality question. Um, when you have a transcendent self, do you transcend morality? Um, <clears throat> and it does seem that Suzuki is accidentally arguing for this non-morality of the transcendent self that lacks any agency or, or history. Okay, this is a problem. It's a problem that he's almost collapsing into religious fundamentalism, Zen fundamentalism, where <clears throat> knowledge is self-contained, self-justifying, uh, um, and it's not in any way um, subject to argumentation from the standpoint of the the other. Okay, okay. <clears throat> um, I think, though, rather than throwing away Suzuki's system, okay, or condemning it. To save Suzuki, we should go back into the conversation of the Kyoto school, as in talk to Tanabe, make a few reverses and start again, okay? Modify his system a bit. So how can Tanabe help us? First of all, the question of religion versus uh, philosophy. Tanabe has made the point that philosophy or rationality is, is a separate mode of knowledge, but is not unlinked to religious knowledge. Um, Tanabe has argued that the, the, when, when we pursue pure rationality and see the aporias, the antinomies, antinomies, these, rather than pushing them away to get to direct experience, we should let these push us forward to get a kind of a, a shock of, 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 um, of what the, um, the fact that rationality doesn't fit the world, okay, rather than being something that that's, shows that philosophy is useless, is actually the point of philosophy and the biggest message philosophy has, and that can really push us forward into a, a more mature uh, religious understanding. Um, and <clears throat> I think going to Suzuki, Suzuki is correct that science and rationality cannot include religious knowledge, and science and rationality should be humble about this, but religious knowledge cannot include science and rationality, and religious knowledge should be humble about that as well, back um, mutually, that no ultimate knowledge is never really ultimate, okay? Um, also, looking, let's look at the initial division that... Um, Suzuki condemns, okay, or, or, or sees as a problem, the initial delusion to be overcome. Suzuki says we divide the world into self and other. Perhaps it's not that. Perhaps it's not that we divide the world into self and other, but we divide the world into other and other. Okay, that's where the loneliness, the alienation, the disconnection, the nihility comes from. And that perhaps self and other is part of the solution, not part of the problem. Um, Tanabe, in his work, charts a, a, a full-rounded self-other relationship where there is, for him, using the, the you call it the, the myth or whatever, the narrative of, of Jodo with um, um, 
going to and coming from Amida, um, uh, also again. So um, the self recognizes the other, um, does not overcome the other. The self is about the transcendent self is about surrendering um, selfhood in this absolute mediation where self and other still remain intact and in dignity, and enemies do not just appear. Okay. That idea of the samurai with the enemy just appearing does not make sense in, in the uh, Tanabe's account of, 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 of Taliki, okay, self and other. Um, also, um, to look at the universal versus particular problem, okay, um, perhaps we need to argue that history does not end at one point, whether it's Kamakura period or post revolution, whatever. Um, Neither does history disappear into an unintelligible flow of disconnected particulars. Instead, we need to think about a kind of a in between the universal and the particular, maybe a species, a logic of species, Tanabe's concept. Um, a form of knowledge between the universal and the particular which concretizes ultimate knowledge, which I, I acknowledge exists, there is ultimate religious knowledge, but it can be formulated, concretized, without being ultimate in a way that is either socially static or epistemologically fundamentalist. Okay? So, to sum up, I argue Suzuki's system, philosophical system, is, is correct, or we can believe it. Okay? Knowledge, if, if we want to, some, not everybody. Okay. Religion has knowledge um, without, um, that is separate to, to science and rationality, that science and rationality cannot explain away. And the awareness of this knowledge comes from a, a, a loss, or a rather a disappearance, dropping away of the everyday self, okay, that we, we keep alive to, to get along in our practical life. But science and rationality can nourish this knowledge, okay? This knowledge itself is not enough. It, the links are still important, okay? And this everyday self falling away to see the, the person of no rank, the face before you were born, uh, must, um, must never imply the loss or overcoming of the other. Okay? Um, <clears throat> self drops away, but the other never does for us. Okay? I think that's the modification and corrections that we need for the Suzuki system, but it's still a system that can point us to an ultimate knowledge that science can never get at, so it's still a system we're keeping alive, just with modifications to deal with history and uh, human life. Okay, okay, that, that's it. That's what I have to say. Yeah, it was 20 minutes, so oh, there's still 20 minutes left for questions and comments. Then. Yeah, a bit too short. Mm. Mm. I'm not sure whether they are questions or not, but they are mm. two points. I okay. To complete. Mm. Uh, recently I was rereading the Bhagavad Gita, mm. and I didn't know the story about the samurai killing. Oh, yes. Yeah. yeah. Good. But it makes me remember when, uh, just at the, the beginning of the mm. Bhagavad Gita, Arjuna mm. uh, is uh, troubled because mm -hmm. mm. two, uh, two armies. And there are friends uh, in every part of the family, and he is uh, not able to decide mm -hmm. what part mm -hmm. is he going to. And he asks uh, Krishna, uh, his uh, Auriga, his, the driver mm -hmm. of his car, he asks him advice. Mm -hmm. And then uh, Krishna tries to convince him that uh, killing would mm -hmm. be all right. Yeah? Right, yes. And my uh, response was. Mm -hmm. Cannot accept mm -hmm. and right. I cannot accept that the samurai is right. When, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So if you could comment on this. For example, mm -hmm. if a terrorist nowadays mm -hmm. puts a bomb somewhere and kills lots of mm -hmm. people, mm -hmm. is there a way to morally justify mm -hmm. what he's doing? Because, you know, in a way, it's the, the passers-by that mm -hmm. have been looking uh, for their death. Mm -hmm. and so something that it's very difficult for me to accept. That, that's the mm -hmm. first point. The second one it reminds me of when Dogen mm. uh, is not satisfied with Tenai because Tenai said, uh, well, uh, you already have good nature mm -hmm. and so you do not need 
to uh, to uh, to do anything, that, 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 I'm not expressing myself well, but the dog in the end says, okay, you have Buddha nature, but you have to strive to get the Buddha nature. Mm -hmm. And that makes me remind of what you mm -hmm. said. Right. Because you said, you know, uh, we already, mm -hmm. every, every moment, we mm -hmm. have the mm -hmm. vastness. Yeah. So, yeah. but uh, maybe I should not have asked Mm. last question, because if we already have mm. this last question, what, why don't we stay in silence mm. all the time we have been talking about? So, because okay. in, in a way, what we are doing, what you have done, mm. what mm. now I am doing, mm. is more typical of a subject-object distinction, mm -hmm. a linear kind of thought mm -hmm. using, you know, subject, verb, uh, and predicate. And right. Why do we, mm -hmm. why mm -hmm. do we need to do that instead okay. of keeping silent as I said, for example? All right, yeah. Okay, um, <clears throat> okay, so, t t t okay, for question number one. Um, yeah, yes, I, I, I um, I agree, agree with you that um, the problem, and it's in the Bhagavad Gita as well, where if there's this kind of ultimate monism, okay, where um, <clears throat> the agency of the self is, 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 is negated, taken away, um, that can lead to, to horrific justifications of, of violence, you know. Um, th that's why I feel that Tanabe is a good corrective, because his idea... Um, of in metanoesis is this sense of um, repentance, where he, he's saying, "Look, I, I, I can, the other doesn't go away from me. That's why I, I go to repentance because I know it's there, and it it's, it can't be denied that it's there." Okay, and um, you know that that that's um, I think Tanabe is a philosophy, and there is far more humane and passionate philosophy than this idea that Suzuki collapses into occasionally. Of you know yeah this this monism of of the, the the sword just going like it's kind of a cosmology of codependency where everything's happening at the same time so my sword me the enemy it's all one okay so it doesn't matter um, no I mean that 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 has to be rejected I think anyway and and G Jack was right to point it out and say look Zen has a problem it, you know if this is the way it's been described but I think the solution is is Tanabe's um, um, idea of, of, of just <clears throat> embracing uh, the other, with, with ever, n not, not ever trying to unite with the other, okay? Okay. Um, the thing is, he, he does it without kind of going back to kind of a, a selfhood that still has, you know, pure agency or whatever, okay? Um, it, it's kind of how, how, how Tanabe describes it as kind of a, this going to and coming back, you know, but it still is, contains a kind of a passionate awareness of the other, okay, that could never justify um, this cold kind of idea of the enemy just appears before me, okay. Okay, um, uh, your, your second question, yeah, wh why, know, why bother knowing about it if it's, it's already known? <clears throat> See, um, okay, one problem, of course, with the philosophy of Zen, and it was discussed yesterday, is that it always has this little concept of, of, of satori, which none of us really have access to, okay? That, that, um, um, but, okay, that, that's fine if we're talking within the Zen temple, okay? I, I would never tell, I would never try to tell people within the Zen temple what their religion is, okay? That's, that's rude and disrespectful. But Suzuki is working in a secular environment, okay? He's, he's, he's using it in a secular discourse, which means I think we all have a right to talk about our ideas of, 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 of Satori, okay? Um, my idea of Satori, okay, is um, occasionally people, the filter of everyday life occasionally falls down, okay? And, and we, we just get overwhelmed by this idea of, oh my God, I'm alive. How did this happen? What's this world? Why is it the world like this and not like that, okay? I, I think, I, I mean, most of you probably have had this moment, okay? Standing at a bus stop, okay? It, it, it doesn't happen in a temple for us. It, it, it's the most... Um, um, bland <laughs> situation, suddenly the filter falls off and we're, we're overwhelmed by 
this idea that we, we exist in a cosmos we didn't create that created us but we're still looking at it and only us see it and God doesn't see it because God's not us and for, for a split second you, you know you know this knowledge okay uh, that's what I, I don't it, it's it doesn't go away okay I, I think that's the idea that um, why, why bother seeking it because it, it seeks you okay um, and it's it's there and um, um, that's my answer yeah 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 okay I don't know if it answers it but yeah okay. yeah it's very interesting but also uh, I think uh, with the comment from the back of reading, I thought exactly the same thing. That right. I didn't help us in completion mm. of that. That's also led me on to another point. Is Suzuki, in a way, constructing a sort of monism? Is he in danger of actually slipping away from mm. Zen almost mm. into more to something like Vedanta mm. as a kind of all is one? Mm. I was thinking that's a kind of contrasting Zen position would be um, Shitani, when he says all is one, but not in the sense that. There's kind of a human kind of whole, but each thing's suchness, mm -hmm. in his suchness mm -hmm. is the. So if you think about, say, both the samurai mm -hmm. in this kind of confrontation, each one mm -hmm. is in a sense being and nothingness. And mm -hmm. like that, I would say, opens, in a sense, a gateway for more compassion because the recognition of that sort of suchness mm -hmm. of entities, not doing mm -hmm. violence to them, yeah, like yeah. compassion, letting beings be in a kind of doubt mm -hmm. sort of mm -hmm. way. As opposed to just saying, well, they're not really there, so yeah. I can yeah, yeah. throw my sword through them. Yeah. But yeah, I suppose, could you say Suzuki is too, isn't Zen enough? <laughs> Uh, okay, yeah, 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 well, that happens, yeah. Like, um, Suzuki, to defend him, he, he was really a pioneer trying to describe this very alien system in, in, in philosophical language. And in his early days, he, he is actually, he does explicitly use the word monism, okay, in, when, when back in his Chicago days, Illinois days, sorry. Um, he says that, that uh, Buddhism is, oh, he's talking about Buddhism. Buddhism is a monist thing, it's, it's a pantheist thing. He does start to move away from that when he sees the problems, and he's always trying to say it's non duality, okay? It's not monism, it's non duality, okay? Um, but th there is always that um, tension going on, okay? He is always in danger. As is Buddhist discourse in general, as I said, it has the concept of codependent arising, uh, non selfhood. And it still has to explain how to get its its ethics of everyday life into it. Um, and also, yeah, as I said, you know, the Kyoto School is a conversation. Um, I think I, I picked out Tanabe, but I also do think Nishitani is a good corrective as well of this dangerous monism that that lurks in in the uh, Kyoto School philosophy. And yeah, that 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 idea where. Um, <coughs> You can never get the overall block <laughs> that that where the samurai is killing the other samurai, where it doesn't matter because it's all moving at the same time. N Nishitani would reject that kind of totalistic block, and he he always tries to push it to a a basho, <laughs> you know. Where yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so I was very intrigued by this uh, conversation that we're having, uh, especially about uh, this, uh, this, I guess it's, it's kind of like a conflict mm. um, between trying to make sense of Zen as mm. um, the basic reality of all things, mm. which yeah. is always there. Mm. Yeah. Uh, and then, of course, uh, Zen practice or, mm. or the, the, the need to strive mm. towards something as well, yeah. like this, yeah. this kind of conflict. And it reminds me of, uh, well, a deeper problem in philosophy in general, which uh, could relate to even uh, maybe some, somebody like Heidegger, mm. where Dasein was, you know, mm. the, his definition for existence, mm -hmm. but at the same time, there was, then he, in early Heidegger, of course, he's kind of trying to distinguish between authentic or almost mm. Dasein, mm. as opposed to inauthentic. Right. Uh, so, and, and of course, this depends on a certain um, relationship. Uh, between the ontological and mm. the existential, or the ontological mm. and the practical. Mm. And of course, Zen thinkers, uh, or Zen thought in general, mm. and in different variations, provides different perspectives on mm. that. But I would love to hear a little bit more about this relationship, because there is something mm. that mm. is being said about ontology, mm. but at the same time, there is something that's being said about you know the striving and practice, but mm. there's 
uh, and they're related in some mm-hmm. way, mm-hmm. in a very deeply complicated way. Yeah. But I'd love to hear a little bit about what you think about this relation, perhaps. Okay. Um, uh, okay. Well, well uh, I'm, I'm not a Heideggerian, but um, okay. If, if we th- we're thinking about the, the conflict between, yeah, something that's ultimate unifying, and the fact that our everyday existence involves, you know, a, a complete disarray and disunity of, of in our everyday life. Um, um, I, I think that the any time the well, one thing about Zen, okay, that one one big text in Zen is the ox herding pictures. It's these nine pictures, okay, of, of the the process of enlightenment, okay, Satori, where things start disappearing, okay. Um, there's this kind of, the, this unity starts becoming more unified, you know, um, um, and eventually leads to this, this, I think it's picture number seven or number eight, it depends on the version, where it's, it's blank, it's blank, okay. Okay, that's the ultimate, that's Zen, you've reached Zen, Zatori, you know. But the thing about the ox herding pictures is it doesn't stop. The next picture is right back to the marketplace, you know. The marketplace, not back to the cow, not back to the cow, then the person, but right back into everyday life in its most banal, secular, vulgar, um, busiest, messiest the, uh, marketplace, okay. And I, I think that's, Zen would always say we, we can't, when you're Satori, when, when you're enlightened, you don't go anywhere, okay? You're still here, okay? That, that, I mean, that's part of the package, you know? That the, the ultimate awareness of your dustness, dustness such as the eternal now means now <laughs> and here, okay? So I, I think uh, um, Zen struggles to describe it, but it, it would always say, but that's our point, okay? Okay, it, there is that gap, <laughs> In reality, okay, okay, which I think is Tanabe's point as well that, that there's, uh, and perhaps I, I would argue just um, Zizek's point as well, that, you know, um, that uh, ultimately there's a gap in the in, in the cosmos, okay, <laughs> between us being a self in the world and and the world being as it is, okay, and it can't be overcome, and the non inability to overcome it is exactly how you overcome it, <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So I only started uh, studying Tanade myself. Right. Uh, so I'm curious about um, when you said that the self drops away, but mm. the other never does. Right. Um, and I'm curious how Tanabe does that without reifying the other as mm. a sort of self in its own right. Right. How do you uh, respect, or like, how does this play out in the field of emptiness? Mm. Like, how do you impart otherness to the other while maintaining emptiness, basically? Right, okay. Um, um, yeah, uh, um, yeah uh, I'm sorry, but, but maybe I, um, I... I wasn't really saying that it's, Tanabe says the self chops away. I was just correcting Suzuki's system. But I, I think Tanabe's picture more is, um, from my understanding of it, and you know, I've started reading uh, um, recently as well, is um, 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 nothing ultimately drops away. It's, it's an absolute mediation, okay? Um, that, yeah, like the ox herding pictures uh, between seven and eight, that um, kind of... Uh, Emptiness is the only way to describe how um, uh, a transformation can take place without anything changing, okay? Without putting something that's, uh, has, uh, that's um, extra into the picture, okay? Um, so, I, I, th- I think that's the picture that Tanabe is always trying to get at, that... Um, um, the um, yeah, the, the self and other surrendering to each other ca- can never ultimately negate either. Okay, okay, and and the only way to complete the picture is to have a, an emptiness. Okay, not not to have a, a third man kind of thing in between. You know, a kind of super <laughs> uh, self other thing. Um, but but just simply, it, it 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 there's nothing else other than us self and other. Okay, I don't know if that describes it. Mm-hmm.
Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Can you have a comment, question? Yeah. Then I think, yeah, we can okay. close this panel for today. And thank you very much to both of you. She went to the airport, I think. Yeah. So, right. yeah, but anyway, it's for both of you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>